Hello everyone and thanks for taking to the OTR Essential Twitter page and tweeting out your questions for this Before No Mercy Q&A video. Let's get through these questions, shall we? Callum Burgess 14 asks, will Vince McMahon ever run for president? No, not at his age, I wouldn't assume. Uh, furthermore, his wife is a part of the current administration working under one of his BFFs for life in Donald Trump. Why would he run for president at this point? He got what he wanted. Spend $100 million of your own money to ultimately have it result in your wife being the head of the Small Business Administration. whoop de frickin do But nah, he's not running for president. Ben, what should main event No Mercy? Rain, Cena, or Braun Strowman versus Brock Lesnar? I feel like no matter what, Strowman versus Brock needs to main event. Here's why. A, if Strowman wins, then that's going to be one of those happy moments that everybody is going to cheer for the most part and celebrate and would be a good way to end the show. So for sure, if that happens, it needs to main event. But even if you get to the point where Brock retains, there's a better chance of the Strowman Lesnar match being more fulfilling and satisfying. So even if people are kind of let down and disappointed with the finish, it feels like it wouldn't piss people off as much with Brock holding the title high at the end of the night as opposed to Reign standing tall over Cena at the end of the night. So to me, I think in this particular case, the easy answer is either way, Strowman versus Brock. But if you are a Breakfast Club follower, a Breakfast Club believer, a Breakfast Club member, then obviously there is only one answer, and it has nothing to do with a world title. It is all about Reigns and Cena. Hugplex City. Could Reigns and Lesnar work at Survivor Series better than WrestleMania 34? At this point in time, if they did that so that way we didn't get it at WrestleMania 34, I am fine with that. Anything to not have that match main event 34 is fine with me at this point, honestly. If we're going to insist on doing it, insist on doing it, and let's hot shot the hell out of that shit and say, screw WrestleMania, let's get it done now. Connor Boyd, can you see dramatic change in the WWE product if the current trend with ratings and attendance continues? The very simple answer is no. Because I would have already thought that where they're at now would have kind of been a bottoming out to a certain degree to where that was really the line in the sand. And once it got crossed, they said, oh my God, we have tr issues here. We have major problems. We're in trouble. And nothing is changing. They're not really doing anything about it. So why would I think if they lost another million viewers and continued to wrestle in front of half-empty arenas at this point, as long as they are maintaining any level of profitability at all, why in the world would I think they're changing anything? And even if they started losing money, I think they would stubbornly cling in and dig their heels in and say that we're right, even though everything from an evidence standpoint clearly indicates that they're not. Uh, Jesse McCray, what GFF, <coughs> excuse me, what GFW, what's GFW? Oh, uh, what impact GFW, TNA, whatever the hell wrestlers, would you say are worth getting behind? A few names, Eli Drake, Eli Drake, the current world champion, Ethan Carbon III, Moose, Lashley. There are guys to get behind. P.D. Williams is back, so you can go with P.D. Williams. Hell, why not? There's a few guys right there. Maybe find a couple of the knockouts to get behind. Um, so there, there's talent there, and there are people to get behind. There are people that can be easy to root for, honestly. Um, it's just a shame that the company is shit. Red Riot, what's a match you love but everyone hates? Hmm. I'm going to answer this slightly differently, Red Riot. There is a match concept that I love that most everybody else hates and hates on. And that is after all of these years and all the times of them wrestling, one of the most ridiculous things the WWE has ever done is never position it to where John Cena and Randy Orton faced off one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. Think about that. They were the two guys of the post lesnar era, so to speak, the PG era. They were the guys. And not once did they face off one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. 
How astoundingly stupid was that? So that would be the match that every year I'm like, oh, we could position it this way. We could do it that way. You saw it this year with WrestleMania. I'm like, oh my God, you could have seen it with the freaking title. You could have Orton win the Royal Rumble. It's the Breakfast Club bash for all. We've been waiting 12 years to see it at WrestleMania, and they didn't do it. And guess what? They had Bray Wyatt win the WWE title. And how was that? Oh, that's right. It was fucking shit. It was shit. So that's the match that I love that everybody else hates. Cena, Orton, WrestleMania. We need one more big Breakfast Club bash. Breakfast Club brawl. That's what we need. Eaton Beaver asks, um, What would you rather see? Hogan, Cena, and anything goes match or 60 minutes politics match with God as the special guest referee? I, I don't even think this is a question. You got to go with the 60 minutes of backstage politicking between Hogan and Cena determining, well, who would go over in the hypothetical match, especially when God gets his big schnoz involved. I mean, just imagine the asses you could put in seats for that one and watch as Hogan schools Cena on how politics are really played, brother. Yah, Yah, Al Haddadan. Do you think indie guys are killing WWE? No, because honestly, most of the guys that come to WWE have worked on the independent scene at some point in time. With that said, I get what you're getting at in terms of the decreasing of the size of the wrestlers. Has that been a problem? Yes, that is one of many, many problems. If the writing was better, the guys would get more over. In some cases, if the talent was better, they would get over better. Um, there's so many things here, the 50-50 booking, and da, 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 da. so I, I can't just sit there and say that indie guys are killing WWE because that's an oversimplification of things. Just like saying Cena Reigns killing, were killing WWE, you could more accurately latch that onto Cena perhaps based off of that decade of doom plus, um, but no, they're not killing WWE. They're not really helping, but they're not killing. Johan Ortiz have you ever watched the Hulk Hogan sex tape? No, and I don't care to. Costello, two current members of Impact's roster you'd like to see in WWE. Lashley would be one, in part to see him face off against Lesnar at a big show. Uh, the second guy... Oof. Oof. Shit, I don't know. Don't honestly know. Maybe Moose, but it's the WWE, so I'm really not trying to send him there. Um, so maybe EC3, but they had him before. They had Derek Bateman before, and they fucked him over royally. But the one guy, from a curiosity standpoint, would be Lashley. I'm going to play this. Would you like to see a 24-7 rule for the Money in the Bank uh, contract holder where they could cash in at any time, anywhere. I mean, technically, you kind of sort of have it in terms of they get a guaranteed title opportunity at any time within a year from the time they win it. I understand it's not full-on 24-7 rules, but you kind of have some of those principles there. In terms of 24-7 rules, I think it's better when it revolves around a title, like an actual title and not the Money in the Bank contract, because then you'd run the issue of overexposing the contract holder. Um, that's kind of the way I think of it. Platon Afro, if you had to fuck one current female wrestler, who would it be? One current female wrestler? There's more than one current female wrestler that I would fuck, that's for sure. Um, probably, what's she called now? Is it like Selena Vega? Used to be Rosita Tia Trinidad. Because it's like fucking an Asian Trist... Or not, excuse me, Asian. It's like fucking a Hispanic Latin version of Trist Stratus to me. So she would probably be the one. I know some of you would probably say, I'm surprised you didn't say Brandy Rose. She'd probably be in the 1B or 1C category. But the simple truth of the matter is, I've had enough black puss to last a lifetime. So give me a variety. Give me something else that I haven't had. And... You know, maybe another one might be like Rebel from TNA because 
I wonder what it's like to have sex with a white woman. Just throwing that out there. Dave Garcia. When all these stars retire in five years, where do you see WWE? Star is a very strong word. Uh, where do I see WWE in five years? Whew. Especially if guys like Cena and Orton are out of the fold and Lesnar's gone. and It's going to be really, really, really bad. And if it keeps up in five years, I can't see myself or a lot of other people continuing to watch. That's what I can't see. Uh, Ruthless Aggression AFC. Your thoughts on the WWE using the old WCW pay-per-view names? Well, in spite of Brandy Rhodes and Cody being all butthurt about the WWE using the Starcade name for a fucking house show and not crediting Dusty Rhodes with the creation with it, ultimately, those who win the wars get to write the history books and you know, WWE won the Monday Night Wars and they bought WCW and all the naming rights that go with it, so why not fucking use the intellectual properties like Starcade? Why not use, again, Great American Bash? Why not use War Games, Halloween Havoc? I mean, there's so many different pay-per-view concepts they could use. Why not do it? You own the rights to them. You might as well get some return on the investment. Rick Stiles, can CP3 and James Harden get the Rockets past the Warriors and to the NBA Files? <laughs> Good luck with that. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> Good luck with that. Let me know how that goes. Matt Mefe, your World Series prediction. I really would like to see a Cubs and Indians rematch. Um, I still, I think the Cubs can repeat. I don't know if they will repeat. But if their starting pitching can get hot, then this team can repeat. And that's what I'm going to gravitate to. That's what I'm going to hold on to. Is that Lester, Arietta, Hendricks are all going to be right come playoff time. Because if they are, the Cubs can beat anybody. Anybody. Um, right now, if I had to make a World Series prediction, it might be the Indians. But then I wonder... Did that massive 20-plus game win streak, uh, did they pop their nut too early? And is that going to ultimately mean that they're not going to be playing well come October? And I think it's a valid question. Uh, Michael Corvin closes us off by asking, thoughts on George Carlin's if you vote, don't complain bit? Um, I love George Carlin. I was a huge fan of his stand-up comedy. Uh, and I love some of the things he talked about and the way that he talked about them. But certain things, like he was kind of a, a climate change denier, and I didn't agree with him there. Uh, the, the, the bit about if you vote, don't complain bit, eh, you know, you could carry that over to other things. If you married the guy or you married the girl, then don't fucking complain about it. I mean, that's just kind of dumb. Um, if I voted for one person and somebody else won, then I didn't like what that other person did, then absolutely I would complain about that. Um, so I think that was kind of dumb. I, I got what he was trying to get at, but I actually thought it was one of his more ineffective bits, honestly. I mean, the stuff about re religion and talking about, you know, bullshit, I mean, spot on the money. So many other things he did and talked about, spot on the money. The if you vote, don't complain bit, I thought was shit, personally. Love George Carlin, massive fan of his. At random times, I would still pull up old bits and uh, routines from the 80s and 90s and watch them, but it is what it is, and I'll call it what it is. That bit was not one of my favorites because I thought it was kind of dumb, personally. But anyways, that's it for this Q&A. If you guys have any other questions until we do the next Q&A video here, go ahead and hit me up on Twitter at OTRS Central. I'm the Schlag Daddy, and remember OTRS Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need, and to borrow a phrase from somebody else apparently, I watched this crap so you don't have to. And remember, there's still time to buy the Assume Jeff Jarrett position shirts. I need to sell nine more by the end of September, which is still doable for me to have to buy, buy that four-disc King of the Mountain TNA Jeff Jarrett DVD set. Watch all four discs and review it. If you want that to happen, then you got to go to Pro Wrestling Tees and buy the shirt. All right, that's it. I'm out.